So we decided to turn this awkward area of our driveway into a pergola with a driving gate. So since we're starting with a nearly finished fence, we had to start removing some of the fence panels and move things around so that we could get the pergola posts in. Uh, and we got two of the pergola posts up. We are gonna basically bring the entire fence up a little bit and connect it to these front pergola posts. Uh, and then those those back posts there, those are coming down to make room for the back supports. For these posts, we dug about two and a half feet down. These are four by six by 12 foot pieces of lumber. We put over a hundred pounds of concrete in here. This is just some video uh, of me extending the fence to the front. This part's gonna connect to the front part of the pergola where the driving gate goes. Okay, so here's the progress so far. We took the fence panels down, moved everything up. Um, this is gonna, gonna be closed in. This is the front part of the fence attached to the front pergola post. This is the other front pergola post where the driving gate's gonna go. We're gonna close all this in with pickets. Next step is to just put the, the board on board pickets up and let these posts set for a few days. We really need to make sure these are good and concreted in. We also have a bunch of rain coming, so it's gonna stay wet. So we're gonna let these posts set for probably three days before we, we check back with this project. Okay, so here we are a few days later. You can see that we finished putting the pickets up so everything is nice and closed in to the front part of the pergola. Um, everything is also nice and set in concrete. And the biggest thing we have to do now is figure out where the top of each post is. Make sure everything is level because our yard is so uneven. What is this? Well, this is a laser level. And it shoots a continuous beam of laser across all four corners. Make sure it's level, you mark the posts where the laser falls, then you take your dimension from your laser line to wherever you prefer your beam to be, Make take the exact same measurement all the way across, and you know exactly where all your top laser's need to rest. Make sure it's good. All right, you heard him, folks. <laughs> so basically what we're doing here is using this laser level to shoot a straight line on all four posts, and then we're gonna measure from that line the same amount of inches up, mark that on all four posts, and then we'll know that is the exact same spot. Um, our yard is extremely uneven, so we couldn't just dig you know, two foot holes, put the posts in, and then just assume they're all level. We have to use this laser level to make sure everything is perfectly square and straight and level. These marks are actually going to be where the top of the post is going. So we actually are going to cut these four by sixes to make sure there's no excess sticking out on top of where the beams are going. So thankfully we had Brian nearby with his massive skill saw to come cut these posts because this machine is crazy and heavy, but it really does a great job of cutting these four by six posts. So the next major step is just a design decision. We have to decide how we want the ends of the beams to look. So we just kind of did a test on this end. We just went two inches down to uh, 20 inches over and just made a straight cut with a circular saw. And on the other end, uh, I went three inches down and just did 45 degree angle. So this is solely an opinion thing. You can do any design you want. Some people do curvy things. We just decided to go with a straight line because it's easier. So this is just a scrap piece of wood. We cut the ends off and just put the ends up on the posts and looked at it. And that's really how we made our decision. 
All right, so now it's the fun part. These are two by 10 by 16 foot uh, pieces of lumber. We cut them down a little bit just to make them the right length. We wanted about 15 inches to stick out past the posts on each end. Um, you can see there are scrap pieces of two by four on the posts. Those are just to make it easy. We can just set them up there and have them stable while we screw them in. So that is what we did with all four beams. There is one beam on each side of both sets of posts. Okay, so here is how it looks with the beams all done. Okay, so now we're gonna finish up the pergola with the driving gate. Um, these are the gate kits that I used. I just picked them up from Home Depot. Um, these are all the items that come with it, pretty much everything to make the gate except the two by fours. Um, so yeah, we just followed the directions on there. Um, we got the center line, we just measured up from the ground uh, to the six foot high picket, got the center, and then 16 inches up from the center and 16 inches down from the center, we drilled a hole. Then we just uh, screwed in the bolts that came with the kit. Uh, you wanna get it started and then kinda use a wrench to get it in there. Uh, make sure you use a good wrench. <laughs> um, this one bent super easily, so I had to go get one of my old wrenches. It doesn't bend. Uh -huh. Sears, old school. A little vintage, a little throwback here. This actually works. Get that thing. Twist it into that. This is gonna take some elbow grease, guys, so make sure you have your Wheaties that morning. Basically, you want to make sure you leave that it's an inch away from the beam or as close to an inch as possible. This is where your gate, gate hinges are going to latch on to. You can see. Open close. Then you just want to lay out the metal frames from the kit and attach your 2x4s. Uh, we just use a planer to get a little bit of excess off the very ends of the 2x4s uh, just so they would fit better in the metal. Um, you get the measurements of the 2x4s just by the uh, width you want your gate. So this is a, since this is a driving gate, we had two of uh, the same size. Pretty much it we just picked it up and hung it on that hinge tighten them so they're even um and now we have working gates next step is we're gonna put pickets all the way across to make it blend in with the fence Okay, so back to the pergola. Um, in order to kind of get these beams uh, more secure and so that they don't like uh, bow in from the weather and everything, we're gonna put two by fours in between the beams and um, secure them with screws from each side. Uh, we're gonna put one two by four on top and then one two by four on the bottom uh, just to make sure these, these beams don't bend at all. Uh, with, you know, the Florida humidity and everything.
there is a lot of going up and down the ladder at this point it was it was a good workout lots of climbing the ladder came a pro at it So after that was done, uh, you get up there, you gotta measure for each uh, cross beam that goes across. So you'll want to take the exact measurement uh, from one edge to the other edge. And that is gonna be where we begin the notch. And then we'll want to add 30 inches to that measurement because we're gonna have a 15 inch overhang on each side. So the measurement from one edge of the beam to the other, add 30 inches, that will be the measurement. Then um, I have this just kind of template of how the edges of all the beams are gonna look. So I'll just put it on top of the beam that we cut. I'm gonna draw a line and just cut that off with a circular saw. Then we want to measure the width uh, between the two beams because that's uh, the width of the notch. And the, the depth of the notch is really up to you. I just went with one and a half inches. So you just draw that line, you start at, at 15 inches, go in the width of those beams, up an inch and a half, and then just cut that notch out with a jigsaw. Once both sides are done, then you have to get those beams up there. Um, some of these were super heavy, some of them weren't. It just depends on kind of how wet they are. But the nice thing about having the beams of, up there, you can kind of use it as, as leverage. So you get one, one end of it onto the beam, and then you can kind of lay it up there and get the notches on. Okay, so we have the two ends on. Uh, next, we're gonna figure out where the middle, the exact middle is. Uh, make a mark there and basically just measure out and see the spacing. We wanna make sure there's an even uh, amount of beams going across and they're evenly spaced. This is definitely the hardest part, um, measuring every single beam and then determining the distances. So you're gonna wanna spend a lot of time on this. Uh, measure each one out, kinda lay them up there and determine the layout visually because I mean, that's the most important thing. They might not be perfectly evenly spaced but you wanna make sure it looks good. So this is gonna be a lot of work, a lot of moving, a lot of adjusting so the wood going across besides just the notches, we're also gonna use these straps. Just got these at Home Depot, um, attaching one to each end. Uh, also, um, because we have the two by fours in between the beams, we're also going to put screws up from those two by fours into the beams. A couple screws on each one on each side. And also with the posts, we're attaching the structural beams to the posts with these uh, lag bolts. Just putting four on each side. So I'm showing you here our original drawing, our original plan, and kind of what we started with and what it looks like now. This one was pretty difficult, but it was fun. It really adds so much. Uh, we still have a little bit of trim to do. We're gonna trim the top out like that other part of the fence there. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.